Hey guys! How are you doing today? So back in March we headed to New Zealand to explore the country for a month and we saw so much of New Zealand. We went to the north, we went to the south. So we decided to put together a little video about our favourite things, like our top 10 reasons why you should visit New Zealand. So you guys are probably wondering how we saw New Zealand. A month is a very long time. And so what we actually decided to do was jump on a group tour. So we did a three week tour with Wild Kiwi and the way we had heard from them is actually the year before we went on this amazing yacht in Croatia with Med Sailors and then we found out Med Sailors was creating a new company in New Zealand called Wild Kiwi and they did these amazing tours around the country and I was like that is perfect that's one of our favorite ways to travel let's jump on one of those now New Zealand is such a huge bucket list and we enjoy small group tours you guys have probably seen we've done quite a lot of them on the channel and rather than jumping on one of these massive buses where there's 50 to 100 plus people on the tour we were happy with Wild Kiwi because it's max 16 people and they're generally around the same age group as us as well yeah. that's one of the main reasons why we decided to go with Wild Kiwi and they also had local tour leaders so the guys that were driving the bus giving us a tour around the place they were all from New Zealand they're born and bred there they knew all the best spots to go so it's kind of like you're traveling with the local around New Zealand so whenever we got to some places they were like this is the best coffee I think they found out pretty early on that we loved coffee and I think we integrated a few more coffee stops than probably required but they always pointed out the best places to grab a quick cuppa and I and <laughs> cuppa <laughs> I also love the actual van that we drove around in. It was like kind of luxury. They had nice leather seats. You had a spot for your USB. We had Wi-Fi wherever we went. Yeah, true. Where we had coverage, there was Wi-Fi. And it, was, it was perfect. It was perfect. New Zealand is massive, so there's a lot of driving days and being able to be comfy the whole time was perfect. Also, the accommodations you stay at are so unique. So one night we were staying at a capsule hotel in Christchurch, because that's our little pod. Like a hostel. And then you have a little blind to close. And then the next day we were on like a little beach hut in Coromandel. It was a, it was kind of cool. A lot of the accommodation is hostels, but they do have those little cherry picked kind of marquee places to stay, which we enjoyed. So we did the 21 days, which is like the ultimate NZ trip. So you can see everything, but just say you're short on time. You only have a week. Maybe you only have two weeks instead of the full three weeks. It's actually modular. So you can pick the North Island or you can pick the South Island or you can pick two from the South Island, one from the North, one from the South, mm -hmm. which makes it super easy. So you can pretty much decide how you want to see New Zealand. Now, because we did the 21 days, there were five other people with us who booked the entire trip. So they carried on with us as the tourism modular and we became pretty good friends with them which was great. So instead of us just sitting here and listing everything we did because we did a lot we thought we would choose our top 10 things we did and saw in New Zealand and share them with you today. So coming in at number 10 is all the incredible hikes we did in New Zealand. New Zealand is such a naturally beautiful place that you want to just get out and go for a walk. We did so many hikes. I think there were days when <laughs> our feet were so sore, but it was worth that because at the end we got incredible sunsets. We saw so much natural beauty that if you really want to get the most out of going to New Zealand, get some hiking boots and go for a walk. This is me in shock of It looks like a painting. That is insane. So number nine is the culture village in Rotorua. Now, when we go traveling, we always want to learn about the local cultures, especially the Maori people. They are one of the friendliest people we have ever met. They are so nice, especially down in Rotorua. So you can actually go to a cultural village and learn more about the Maori people. So when you arrive, they do a traditional welcome ceremony and then they have all these stations so you can learn about their artwork and their dancing and their hunting and how they cook their food. Speaking of food, they put on such a good show. So what happens is they actually cook a lot of their meals inside the ground. So Rotorua is the geothermal area of New Zealand, which means there's a lot of heat underground because of the volcanic activity. So they use this heat with their cooking. So they bury your food underground, your meats, your veggies, and then they cook it and bring it up right in front of you. And then they serve it for dinner that night. So coming in at number eight is the glowworms in Waitomo. It's pretty much the main reason why you go there, but it is such a unique activity in New Zealand. You just cannot miss it. We've never done anything like it. So you literally enter a cave, you have your torch on, and then the guide tells you to turn your torch off. And then you look up at the roof and there are 
thousands of glow worms shining all over the roof. They're like a kind of like a blue color. Yes. You honestly can't describe it. You have to do it for yourself, but they look like glowing silkworms. So it lights up the cave and it just looks like the night sky, like thousands and um, thousands of stars. We just came out of our first cave and that was so cool. Number seven, swimming in ice cold waters. Now there was one day where we visited Hokitika Gorge and it is this glacier fed water what, what was it like, three degrees or something? I don't know, it was so cold and we all decided to just strip down to our bathers, jump in the water. <laughs> like, you don't get used <laughs> to it. Sometimes you can jump into a water and you're like, oh yeah, it's cold. And then after a while it warms up, uh-uh. <gasps> oh my goodness. You'll find that a lot of our top reasons to visit New Zealand kind of happens in Queenstown because it is just the adrenaline capital. Coming at number six, I've heard about the rope swing in Queenstown and I've bungee jumped and skydived before, but I'd kind of saved the rope swing for later because you pretty much drop 60 meters before going into the swing. That was double the size of my original bungee jump in Whistler in Canada. One of the girls on our trip wanted to do the rope swing, but not by herself. So we decided to do a tandem and they have so many different ways you can do the rope swing. We decided to do the rope cut. They dangled us over the side and then they quickly cut our rope. <laughs> I'll have to cut to the footage. It is seriously one of the best experiences to do. Are you scared? Yeah, I'm very scared. I'm very, very scared. I also love that because I was too scared to do the swing, they actually had an option called the Canyon Fox. And it's not just a flying fox. You, <laughs> it isn't just a flying fox. You actually fall five meters into the flying fox. And I was like, that's enough adrenaline for me. So I did it and it was scary, but I did it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Good work, Jess. <laughs> So number five is going in an ogo in Rotorua. Now, you probably haven't heard of the word ogo before, but you may have seen it before. So what it is, is it's like a big plastic ball filled with a little bit of water. You go inside it at the top of a hill and then someone just pushes you and you go down the hill. It is like the weirdest activity ever, but it is so fun. It is really fun if you go tandem with someone else yeah. because you're kind of like whacking into each other and like both laughing. By the end, I had stitches and I couldn't breathe because I was laughing so much, but it's one of those expectations reality things. Yeah, if you cut to the footage of outside the ball, it, it doesn't look anything like exciting, but once you're inside the ball, it's like chaos. <laughs> Alrighty, so coming in at number four is go on a cruise in Milford Sound. Now this is pretty much a natural wonder of the world and words seriously cannot describe the beauty of this place. Just picture the mountain scene in Lord of the Rings and they're just surrounding you in this little lake. You go on a boat, there are waterfalls coming down the side. It's so unbelievably beautiful. I reckon it's like the most beautiful place in New Zealand. Definitely. You could spend a weekend, a week there, it is like, it's absolutely breathtaking. Seriously guys, come to Milford Sound. This is crazy. Coming in number three, Hobbiton. <laughs> yes. He is an absolute Lord of the Rings fan. Hey, you went to New Zealand because you saw the movies. Don't put this all on me. You can't describe Hobbiton. It is like walking into a real life movie set. You walk in there, you see like Frodo and Gandalf and it's actually a really beautiful spot. So even if you aren't a fan of the movies, I'd suggest you still go there because the hills that they've built the set on, it's it's just... It's so like New Zealand. Yes. You know? That's the perfect word. It's so New Zealand. So nothing is rebuilt. It's all there from the movie. One of my favorite parts is that they've actually kept the pub from the Hobbit movies there and it's still working. So you can actually go and get a drink. It's all included in the price. You can go and grab a beer, grab like a meat pie and sit at the pub right where they filmed the movie and sit back and have a drink after the tour. Frodo could have sat here. And they could have, this could have been the table where they're all cheersing and getting drunk on. Alrighty, so coming in at number two is back at Queenstown again, and this time it's canyoning. We have never done canyoning before. We actually had never heard of the term. So what canyoning is, you start the trip by abseiling down into a canyon. You're fully geared up with wetsuits, with protective helmets, and you're just going on an adventure. You jump off waterfalls, one bit you zip lined, and you had to undo your zip line and just fall 10 meters into the water. You're just going through, you feel like Indiana Jones. Yeah. Like, 
Honestly, it's so much fun and we were the only people that did it on our tour group. So if you guys go on a wild Kiwi trip, seriously, the best advice we can give you is do the canyoning in Queenstown. Woo! <laughs> Alrighty, and coming in at number one is heli hiking in France, Joseph. Wow. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is amazing. So what you do is you jump in a helicopter and you fly and land on the base of a glacier and then you spend about two or three hours hiking through the glacier, like hiking through little ice caves, hiking through walls of ice. You have crampons on which attach to your feet so you can clip onto the ice. You have ice picks, you're walking through there and you're climbing the glacier. We even went into a point where we're in a cave and there was a rope and we had to drag ourselves through the cave. And then when it's all over, you jump back on the helicopter and then they fly you back down, back into the town. It is amazing. Hands down, our favorite thing we did in our time in New Zealand. It's a little bit pricey, so make sure you put some money aside, but it is well worth every single dollar. So worth it. <laughs> oh my God. So that was our top 10 things, top 10 reasons to visit New Zealand, but in our 21 days, we saw so many things, including surfing in Raglan, the shot over jet in Lake Taupo, wine tasting in Napier, checking out the geothermal pools in Rotorua, finding Narnia in Coromandel, kayaking through Abel Tasman, having so much fish and chips, eating a famous Ferg burger, finding that Wanaka tree, i.e. the most Instagrammable famous tree in the world, and finally, hiking Mount Cook. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed that top 10 list on what we got up to in New Zealand. Now, if you were interested in what we got up to on our wild Kiwi trip, we vlogged our entire time in New Zealand. So make sure you check out the playlist below. Now, if you are new around here, make sure you hit subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.